Today I'm going to show you the five items you need to make your own homemade maple syrup. There are many different options you can have with all these items. There's many different upgrades you can do as well, but these are the five essential items you need to at least get started. I'll leave a link down below for all these items so you can go online and find them very easily. The first item you want to have is a cordless drill. This makes it much easier when you're walking around the yard or out in the sugar bush and walking through all the snow. It's a lot easier using a cordless drill than it is to have a hand crank drill or a quarter drill, which you can use. It just makes it much easier having the cordless drill. The other thing you want to have is a very sharp drill bit. I have a 5 16 bit and I have 5 16 inch spiles. There are other size spiles, so make sure that you get the drill bit that fits your spile. I've also put a piece of tape on my drill bit. You only want to go in about an inch and a half to two inches into your tree. Otherwise, if you go further than that, you can harm your tree. The second thing you need is your spile and your hose. This goes into the hole into the tree that you just drilled. I have a video I'll link up above that shows exactly how to make these. They're real super easy. You just cut the tubing, dip this in a little bit of hot water, and squeeze them on. When making your spiles, you need to make sure that you make them long enough because with the snow built up, and you have whatever collection device you have there, if your hose is too short when the snow melts, that hose will come right out of your container. And you don't want that. You don't want to lose any of that sap onto the ground. You can buy pre-made spile kits um, right off the line, and they come, I think, two foot or three foot long. Uh, I suggest getting the three foot long ones. It's always better to be just a little bit long than a little bit too short. The third item you're gonna need is a container, whether it be a bucket or a sap bag. I prefer buckets myself. You also want to have a lid with your bucket. Now what I do with these lids is I'll take a 3 8 drill bit and drill a hole into the lid. We can seat our lid, put our spile in the hole, and then that keeps a lot of the debris out, a lot of the bark and insects or anything. We don't want any of that in our sap. A few good ways to find buckets, uh, a deli or a bakery usually buys stock or frosting in bulk and you can get these fairly cheap from your local dairy or bakery. Uh, another place you can look for is Facebook Marketplace. I found many places that have bulk buckets for sale and they're really inexpensive. If you go to the big box store and purchase these for full price, it'll get kind of expensive if you're tapping a lot of trees. The fourth item you're going to want to have is a way to evaporate your sap. So this could be a number of different things that you can use. Uh, one common item you can use is a turkey fryer or any kind of burner in a stock pot. Uh, the one thing you don't want to do though is do this inside. All the steam that evaporates off of the sap does get a little sticky. So if you do this inside, your cabinets and your stovetop can get a little bit sticky. So I suggest doing this outside. You could use a big stock pot on a burner. You could use your gas grill and a uh, stock pot on there. There's many different things you can use to evaporate your sap. This is just a few different ideas for you. By all means, go online and check some other options out. I have some videos up above here that I'll link that show you my cinder block arch that I use here. It's fairly inexpensive as well, and it does a lot more sap. After you're done boiling all your sap, you're gonna need a way to filter your syrup. So number five on our list is an Orlon filter. This is a cheap, inexpensive filter you can use for your final filtering process. You're going to want to filter your syrup before you bottle it. This is going to lead to a much cleaner and clearer syrup. I have a video of our vacuum filter press that I'll link up above so you can check out how we filter it here at Gandhi Farms. Alright guys, bonus item. This is not necessary at all, but if you get into any large quantity of making maple syrup, you're going to want to take any of that time out that you can. One of the best ways I can suggest to take some of the time out of the boiling process is to reverse osmosis your sap. That will take out hours and hours and hours of boiling time. So there is a small upfront fee that you're going to need to invest in an RO system. There's plenty of videos out there on the internet you can check out to make your own that's rather inexpensive, but that will save you hours of time. It will save you wood if you're using a wood arch. It will save you propane if you're doing it on a turkey fryer. That's one bonus item I would suggest to speed up your process. It doesn't matter if you have one tree in your yard or if you tap 50 trees out in your sugar bush. As long as you're out there sugaring, you're getting sap out of the tree, you're boiling it down, you're going to make great syrup. If you guys want to check out some of the ways that we make great syrup around here, check out these videos. Alright guys, we'll catch you on the next one.